So here's the big question. How are entrepreneurs like us, who have been hustling and struggling to make it to success, who seem to make it one step forward, only to fall two steps back, who are dedicated, determined, and driven, how do we finally break through and win? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Brian Kelly, and this is the Mind Body Business Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. We have another phenomenal, phenomenal guest lined up. Uh, she is waiting in the wings, waiting for Brian to stop talking so she can come on. Welcome to the Mind Body Business Show. It is a show that we have had uh, created with entrepreneurs in mind. So it's a show for entrepreneurs, by entrepreneurs. And our mission, our purpose is to bring on the most successful entrepreneurs we can find. And we're, we've gone around the globe. And tonight we have a very, very successful entrepreneur that I cannot wait for her to share her wisdom with you and where she is in her life, how she made it there, uh, to give you hope, that you, uh, to help you to understand that that is also possible for you if you just simply take notes on what she has to say and then model what she has done. That's a fancy word for copy. That's it. It, it doesn't need to be that difficult. Yes, it takes hard work, but as long as you have the recipe, any recipe that is successful is good enough. And there are many recipes to success, but it only takes one. And Kim may just have that one recipe that fits you, that you can use and move forward faster in your life, in your business, and just crush it. So the Mind Body Business Show is based on what I call the three pillars of success, and they are part of the very title of the show, Mind Being Mindset. Now, I, I actually studied only successful people for a period of 10 years or so. And these three things kept bubbling up to the top, these three characteristics, if you will. And to a person, each one of them that I studied. Now, these are people that either were still alive, have no, were no longer with us, or they could have been mentors of mine. I mean, I did study with my mentor uh, a, a wide range, uh, male, female, different ages. And they all had these, these attributes, mine being they had a very positive uh, and powerful, but most importantly, flexible mindset and then body that literally means what it sounds like they all to a person took care of themselves uh both what they ate and drank and their exercise habits and oh our guest tonight is no different in that area and then business business is so multifaceted and what that entails is there are many different skill sets that one must master in order to build and create a successful business and then to scale it even further one must acquire even more skill sets. And these are skill sets like marketing, sales, team building, systematizing, leadership. I, there's many, and I can keep going. The good news is you personally don't have to master every single one. In fact, there's one key one that if you were to master it, the others can fall into place much more simply. And you personally don't need to master every skill set. And that one skill set is the skill set of leadership. Once you've mastered that, and even during the time you are in the process of mastering it, you're building your team, you're leading your team, and now you have the means to delegate out the tasks for those who have the skill sets that you may not have yet acquired, or let's be honest, you may never acquire because to, to master a skill set can take a very long time, and there are many that are required. So that's good news. That's good news. And our guest, Kim Sorrell, has mastered all of this, and she is in a place right now that you are going to be just blown away by, and I am so excited to have her on. Another fantastic attribute that I learned that most successful people have, I, I shouldn't even say most, every single one I've ever met, is, is they are habitual readers, and I'm not talking about just reading any kind of book, but the right books. Uh, it's okay to have those leisure times and read fiction and things like that. But for the most part, by and large, successful entrepreneurs read very poignant focused books. And with that, I'd like to segue into a little segment I affectionately call Bookmarks. Bookmarks, born to read. Bookmarks, ready, steady, read. Bookmarks, brought to you by reachyourpeaklibrary.com. 
Yes, and I promise, Kim Sorrell is still with us. She's coming on here just in a moment, so hang tight. You do not want to miss her. I promise you. I promise you. So Reach Your Peak Library. Uh, here's the thing. Real quick word of advice. When you hear about resources, websites, books, uh, different kinds of valuable resources, from mostly from Kim, rather than succumb to that itch to go clicking away and, and checking it out while the show is running, my advice and this is the advice I give every show and I give it from stage is to basically pay attention and write notes, take down these resources like reachyourpeaklibrary.com, write it down. Don't go visit it, write it down. And then when the show is over, review your notes and go visit those resources afterward. Why do I say that? Because I have seen it from stage as you're getting ready to drop that golden nugget that could change lives. Some people will get up and need to go to the restroom or they'll get up and they have that all important phone call. I just don't want that to happen to you. So that's just my advice. I take notes. I'm running this whole thing and I take notes myself. So I'm not asking or uh, training anyone to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. So off my soapbox, reachyourpeaklibrary.com. It's literally a resource I had put together with you in mind. It sounds a little cheesy. I get it, but it's the truth. I didn't do this for me. <laughs> this is actually a collection of books that I personally have read over the course of the past uh, 10 years. I only started reading uh, voraciously just 10 years ago. I'm 57 at the time of this uh, this show. And so you can see as, if you're watching this uh, either live on recorded video, the books are scrolling up. There's no rhyme or reason to their order. These are just books that I personally read and I personally vet. And that way you have less chance of choosing a book that might waste your time. I can't guarantee that's going to have profound impact on you like it did me, but at least the odds are increased. And so it's about working smarter and enabling you to work harder. I love changing that up a little bit. So that is what that's for. It's my gift to you. And it literally is this, these buttons, these clicks all go to Amazon. Uh, so, and if anyone has ever uh, put a affiliate link to a book on Amazon, you know that you don't make what 12 cents. I don't even know what it is. It's a tiny amount. It's not for the purpose of making money. It is here for a resource for you to utilize. I hope you take advantage of that. And now it's time to bring on the very lovely, the wonderful, the amazing, and very successful Kim Sorrell. Here she comes. Get ready. It's time for the guest expert spotlight. Savvy, skillful, professional, adept, trained, big league, qualified. And there she is, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it is the one. It is the only Kim Sorrell. <laughs> <laughs> what an introduction. Holy cow, I'm savvy. I like being savvy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you are. You are all of those and so much more in our brief time just chatting right before the show. It's so interesting to me, Kim, how people that are in a similar lane, we get along so quickly. It's like I've known you for a long time instantly, and it's like you're part of an extended family. I don't know. Has that happened to you a lot in, in your walk through entrepreneurship? Yeah, I think you're a little special, Brian. But yes, I think that that's true. I think it's, it's like your kindred spirits. Yeah. Uh, as Anne of Green Gables would say, I guess. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. Hey, before we jump in, I'm going to give you the proper introduction that you deserve. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping real quick because we do have a couple of sponsors right over Kim's left shoulder which is on the right-hand side, if you're viewing <laughs> straight on, is a nice big red and white logo called the Big Insider Secrets. They sponsor this show, and they allow us to give away, every single show, a five-night stay at a five-star luxury resort. And we're just so blessed that they allow us to do this. So, so thank you, Jason Nast and the Big Insider Secrets. Stay to the end of the show. You must be watching live and you'll see how you can enter to win. I can't wait to see who does that. And we got a couple more and then we're going to get back to this lovely, lovely lady. Here we go. So if you're struggling with putting a live show together and it's overwhelming and you want a lot of the processes done for you while still enabling you to put on a high quality show and connect with great people like Kim Sorrell and grow your business all at the same time, then head on over to carpetbombmarketing.com. Carpet Bomb Marketing, saturate the marketplace with your message. And one of the key components that is contained in the Carpet Bomb Marketing series is one that you'll learn how to absolutely master. It's the very service we're using right now, right here, to stream this show, the Mind Body Business Show, 
And over the course of, gosh, it's been over 10 years now, I've tried so many of these quote unquote TV studio solutions for, you know, live streaming video. And I got to tell you, StreamYard is the best of the best. And that's because it combines supreme ease of use along with unmatched functionality. So write this URL down, take it on your notes, ryp.im forward slash stream live, all together, no spaces and all lowercase. One more time, ryp.im forward slash stream live. You can start streaming high quality, professional looking live shows for free with them the moment that you go to that, that URL and get a free account and give it a whirl. I highly recommend you do that. Speaking of highly recommending, I highly recommend you watch and listen to this young lady, Kim Sorrell. She is an amazing woman. I cannot wait to get her, elicit her special uh, secret sauce that she has developed over the years that got her where she is. I can't wait for this whole story. Kim Sorrell, writer, speaker, entrepreneur, and director of a nonprofit organization, devoted a year to finding love's true meaning. How many of you thought that was coming? This is awesome. Her book, Love Is, a year-long experiment, experiment living out First uh, Chronicles chapter 13, love. Her It chronicles her sometimes funny. There's, there's like chronicles everywhere in here. Uh, her funny, uh, sometimes scary, always enlightening journey that led to life-changing discoveries found mostly on the streets of Haiti. Oh, there's so much to go with this. This is fantastic. So... Kim, welcome officially, formally, and respectfully to the Mind Body Business Show. So great to have you here. Thank you, Brian. It's so great to be here. All right. Whew, we're going to have some fun. So we had an, I, I mean, I learned so much about you in such a short period of time right before the show. I have so many questions for you. I like to open it up with what's going on in the, the brain and the noggin, because in my humble opinion, anyone's current level of success or lack thereof is 100% due to what's going on between their own two ears and no one else's. And I've seen this time and time again, and I've experienced it myself. With you, Kim, as you were going through your journey, being an entrepreneur, running a business, successful business, as that was going on and you were facing each and every day where we know we have those arduous tasks that might be coming up or those setbacks that always hit us, what was it for you when you would get up? I mean, literally the moment you woke up, got out of bed, What's going on in your beautiful brain that kept you driven, that kept you powering through and succeeding day in and day out? Well, a couple things. One is that if you put your mind to it, you can do it. That's how I feel. Like anything that you want to do, you can achieve. And now with the internet, if you want to learn it, you can learn it and you can do it. And so it makes it so easy. But for me, my big motivation when I get up in the morning is if I have more to do in a day than I can possibly humanly get done, that is a great day for me. I love it when my plate is way too full. And so I just can attack and get done what I can. Wow. That means you'll never be bored, right? <laughs> That's right. That's I mean, true. if it's too full and you know you can't achieve it all, yeah, just prioritize it, get done what you can, and it'll be there the next day to be on another day where you don't have enough time to <laughs> do everything. That's an interesting take on it because that keeps, I, I love that. It's like a self-inflicted drive. Like there's always something to do and you don't seem to react to it in a stressful manner. You're like, cool, I've got enough to do and I'm not going to have any idle time to waste here. Yeah, Is I think that it can be so easy to, to put something off if you've got lots of time to get it done you can put it off put it off put it on. ah tomorrow's fine tomorrow's fine you know the next day whatever but when you've got to get it done and there's so much to do you got to get that it is, done that is so true i mean if you have two things to do sometimes you don't get any of them done but if you have 15 you seem to get most if not all of them done because there's urgency involved it's so true. That's why it's so important. Uh, I've, I've heard from many uh, successful people like yourself. I don't know. If, I'm sure you did this where you would basically put in your to do list either the night before or the first thing in the morning or at least at some point during the day to know where you're at. Uh, and you can see like, my gosh, I got a lot to do when you do that, though. I notice, man, I'm knocking them out like crazy if they're written down. Is that a format you used at all? Oh, yeah. I am a list maker for sure. I need a list. I love a list. It's driving me nuts right now. I'm actually moving um, from where I live. I'm moving from a condo to a house. 
and I just sold my last business basically. And so I have no office for the first time in my life. I am officeless and it's driving me nuts because I don't have all the tools I need just right in front of me because I have no office. So yes, making lists, I, I have to. And, and then there's something psychological rewarding, something really wonderful about putting that check mark on each one as you get it done too. Oh gosh, like you are so spot on. I mean, it's so funny what really motivates us. I mean, I've been to all these seminars and things in person where uh, a person had spent months trying to achieve a goal for the purpose of getting on stage and receiving a t-shirt. <laughs> Sometimes the mo it just doesn't, it's, it's what it means. It's not what it is. It's like it, what it stands for, what it represents. And it says, I just accomplished another task on my list that I'm knocking out. Uh, similar to getting that t-shirt and everyone giving you the accolades on stage for, for just a fleeting moment. <laughs> it's so right. funny. Yeah. I love it. You so only need you many t-shirts anyway. So. What was that? I said, you only need so many t-shirts. So the check marks <laughs> are great. great. That's true. <laughs> they make great shop rags in the garage. I love them. Uh, <laughs> when you get too many, it's like, well, it's clean. I can use it. Uh, even if it's not. But um, <laughs> so you did mention you kind of put a teaser in there. And I love that you did that, where you talked about the fact that you just sold your business. And so what I wanted to do is is part of this show. And I want to get to your book for sure. We're going to get to your book because um, I'm really intrigued by that as well. There's so much about you that's I mean, like you said, I don't think we have enough time for the show with all the things I got in my mental list to talk about. <laughs> so it's going to be a good one. Um, so I wanted to ask you about your past business and you don't have to give any details out. You don't want to, um, but feel free to give any that you do. And that is obviously you found some success and you got to the point where you could sell it. I have heard so many people, Kim, uh, my mentor being one of them who lives by it too. He says, build a company with the intent that you're going to sell it. So that way you're not so emotionally tied to it. And when it's time, it's not that difficult and you can and you will and then you can move on to your next task in life was that did that go through your mind at all while you were going through this business or did it kind of happen it by osmosis saying i'm done i want to go do what i love what was going on with you yeah absolutely i always have in mind to sell always i, I think that's a good way to do it you're going to keep cleaner books you're mm -hmm. going to um make sure that that you are a well-oiled machine make sure that you do everything right the way it should be done you have the right systems in place so somebody could just walk in and take over and give you a lot of money to do it so and it's awesome and so that resulted in you doing what what are you doing now <laughs> well um so now i'm moving like i said but now i'm passionate very passionate about this journey that i took and this book that I ended up writing that that came from that. Um, I uh, had uh, a kind of odd experience in life. A few years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm. And then four months later, my husband was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Oh, and my. he passed away just six weeks later. And uh, we were in business together. We worked together. We coached together. I coached varsity volleyball for 17 years. I coached basketball for 25 years. I, and we did it together. Um, and uh, he was the love of my life. We were going to grow old together. And here I was 47 years old and single and without him and this whole new life that I needed to create and figure out. And it made me question for a bunch of different reasons. It made me question the truth about love. Because it's not like there's a book on it. You know, you, you have that great library, Brian, but you probably don't have love for dummies in your library. And no. so we learn love from people around us, you know, the people that raise us, the people that we come in contact with. And not everything we learn about love is true and not everything done in the name of love should be done in the name of love because it's not love. Ooh. Oh my goodness. You, you, okay. So I bet you're really good at marketing because that has got me leaning in. I want to read the book like right <laughs> now. Um, can you hold up, hold up your, your uh, copy real quick? I'd like to yeah. show everybody what it looks like. So she's showing that love is, is Kim Sorrell, a year long experiment of living 
out first corinthians 13 love love it yes so, yeah, yeah. yeah so i'm really excited to um dig into this a little more uh so love is it's it's defined in so many different ways uh and i'm curious like what compelled you? I, I know it compelled you now from the surface level, but as you were going through it, what were you discovering as you were learning about what you found out about love? Because I don't even know what it's about. I haven't read your book and I'm, now I'm like so curious. Uh, <laughs> what did you discover in this journey of writing about love? I discovered so much. Um, what I did is I, I thought I could get it done in a year. That was my plan is I would devote an entire year, which is a lot for me because even though I'm in business and even though I can get stuff done, I have a hard time making some decisions like what entree to order at the restaurant. So to <laughs> dedicate an entire year to something was a big, a big thing. And I thought, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to dedicate a year. And so I took this 2000 year old poem that you hear at a lot of weddings. Love is patient. Love is kind, does not envy, does not boast, etc. And I determined to take one word a month to figure out what is love that is patient? What is love that is kind? And uh, but I quickly realized there are 14 words and terms in that poem. So I did some math and it didn't work out to be a year. <laughs> it took me a little bit longer. But what I found out, Brian, blew my mind. Like, um, like, like the very first one out of the gate, love is patient. So my book I start out each chapter with what I think it is. And then I tell the story of what leads me to the truth of it. So like patience, you know, patient, I know patient, you, you're stuck in traffic. You're not honking your horn, right? You're not mad because somebody's in your way, you know, you get hit at the grocery store or something, you don't lose your cool, you know, you're patient. But I figured out that love that is patient is entirely different than that, that any word you put in front of love that it is and it is not, it changes the definition. It's no longer what Noah Webster wrote. So love that is patient. And I believe you're supposed to love everybody. If you love everybody, it's a happier life. It's a, it's a much better way to live. So if you love the person you're with, which you should, love that is patient would say that this is the most important moment of your life. What's in the past is in the past and what's in the future is yet to come. This is the moment. And for me, it has taken a lot of practice to be really in the moment and to be intentional about it and really listen to the words that are coming out of the person that I'm listening to. I could be, I thought I was the greatest multitasker in the world. Like I could think about my meeting later today, my grocery list for on the way home, what I did yesterday and when I'm going to stop and work out while hearing on a full conversation and be fully engaged. And I found out that I'm not that person. I am not the grand multitasker that I thought I was. I was missing moment after moment after moment because I was too busy planning what I was going to say instead of really listening to what was being said or thinking, I need to get out of this conversation. This is an interruption. I need to get going. I've got things to do, places to go, people to see and miss it. And you miss it. But love that is patient says, don't miss it. Don't miss this moment. This is the moment. And when you do that, you really listen to people. You listen to their words without thinking, oh my gosh, well, what am I going to say next? but listen to their words first. And when you listen to the words, they may come out different than what you think. And confrontations can turn into conversations. Democrats and Republicans could sit down at a table across from each other with food on the table and the food could remain on the table and not on the walls. If you just listen, if you just truly listen, because uh, we have a lot more in common than we think we do. Wow. I mean, so many thoughts are going through my mind on this. And of course, I always like to steer things in my head toward the business side. And I'm thinking, wouldn't this be a phenomenal concept to learn in business as well when you're truly listening to your clients, not figuring out how you're going to formulate your clothes <laughs> and try to get them to the clothes and just listen to them at a deeper level? Because how important is it to know what they're what they want and to see if you're going to fit? 
most of the time or oftentimes you're not a fit if you truly do listen uh, those that try to fit them into a into a space they're not but i mean just one that's one of 14 patients right 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 this is one of 14 right so is yeah. this book available on amazon uh or in other major outlets it's available everywhere it's available in uh, barnes and noble brick and mortar stores um and other brick and mortar stores um which i love a good bookstore and uh but it is available on amazon on any any place online it is available and um, i just really believe i'm very passionate about what i learned about because uh, it changed my life it really rocked my world like the the things that i learned like um for instance, uh, there's one that says love doesn't keep a record of wrongs. I was wow. kind of nervous about that one because I was like, well, you don't forget things that happen to you, right? <laughs> you, don't, you, you might forgive maybe, but you don't forget. So what does that mean to not keep record of wrongs? And so the month that I was working on that one, I had been asked by a group of men uh, from Missouri. Maybe I shouldn't have said that from somewhere. Um, <laughs> to go with them uh, to see a water project that I was working on in Haiti. And they wanted to see if they wanted to get involved, which is fabulous. And I said, yes, of course I'd go. So there were eight men. And then I took two Haitian friends with us who were both men so they could translate and help with the project. And we drove out into the countryside. We got to where we were staying. And it was a cement wall in rural Haiti with uh, you know just dirt in this little tiny building with two rooms. And each room had four twin size beds. So the head guy of the eight guys calls me over, Kim, Kim, can I talk to you? I'm like, sure. And he said, did you see the rooms? <laughs> and I thought, well, buddy, there's nothing else to see. There is nothing else here. But then I thought, oh, he's gonna think I want my own room. And so I'm going to say, well, it's okay. I'll sleep outside. And then he'll say, no, if anybody should sleep inside, it should be you. And then I'll say, well, I don't care if there's some other people in the room. And he'll go, great, because there's only so much space. So I'm like, oh, okay, I got this handled. So I said, well, it's okay. I'll sleep outside. And he said, good. Oh, good. That's great. Because there are men here that would be uncomfortable with a woman in their room. And I'm thinking, what is possibly going to happen? You don't go to bed in Haiti until you're going to sleep because it is hot, hot, hot mm -hmm. there. And <laughs> what's going to happen? I wear pajamas. Like, I didn't know what they thought would happen in the night, but I offered. So I thought, okay, I got to do this. I got to <laughs> sleep outside. So there was this piece of plywood and it could get propped up on, on things. And so I had it propped up. And I thought if I sleep underneath that, at least if it rains, I'm protected from the rain. Oh. And we brought an air mattress and we brought a couple cots and the cots would fit in the rooms with uh, the guys, but my Haitian friends wouldn't let me sleep outside alone. So they had theirs under this overhang. So they were protected from the rain. So I blew up my air mattress first night. And my biggest fear, of course, was that something would slither on me or crawl on me or and bite me and something would happen. And because there are snakes and tarantulas and chupacabras or whatever it is that is lurking in the bushes in Haiti. And so I, I go to bed with this blown up air mattress. An hour in, the air mattress is completely flat. So I'm sleeping on gravel. And it is so loud. Dogs are barking and horns are honking. And it's loud, it's loud, it's loud. Finally, like 1 a.m., it simmers down. Then at 2 a.m., the voodoo drums start in the distance. And they were going, going, going. And about 4 a.m. or so, that stopped. And finally, then I was able to get some rest. <laughs> and so first night came and went. Nothing happened. Second night. Same thing, dogs barking, horns honking. I'm sleeping on gravel, then the voodoo drums, then finally I'm sleeping. But I woke up because there was something on my leg. Oh. And I was so afraid to open my eyes to see what it was because I thought, oh my gosh, what's going to bite me? You know, does Haiti have the anti venom? Am I going to lose a limb? Can I be airlifted to Miami? You know, what, what is going to happen? So I slowly lifted my head and I slowly opened my eyes and it was a chicken. 
<laughs> there was a dang chicken on my leg. And I did not know whether to be mad because this chicken woke me up from the little sleep I was getting or happy <laughs> that it wasn't something worse and I, I could keep all my limbs after all, you know, whatever. So then the third night came and went without incident. Everything was fine. Then came the fourth night. And again, the dogs, the horns, the voodoo drums, finally sleeping. And again, I woke up because there was something on my leg. So again, I slowly lifted my head and I slowly opened my eyes. And again, it was the dang chicken. And again, I didn't know whether to be mad or happy. I didn't even know how to react. But that night, we had chicken for dinner. So my fifth night was just fine. I slept the amount of time that I could sleep. So here I am working on love doesn't keep a record of wrongs, right? And I'll never forget that, you know, story. And at first I was kind of bitter. I was like, you know, I am I am all about equality. I am all about it. But I, I do also know there's a difference between men and women. And I'm a woman. And I, I, I'm sure of it. I've been one my whole life. And so um, I didn't understand how I got put in that position. And I thought, gosh, I hope my sons would never do this to a woman. Like, this is terrible, you know, whatever. And I was mad. But here I am, you know, love doesn't keep a record of wrongs. And then it finally dawned on me what that meant. So I'll never forget that time, right? Um, you don't forget the things that happened to you. But the narrative has changed. And instead of it being this horrible thing that happened to me, and I can't believe these guys did this to me, now it's just this funny thing that happened. And now I could literally sleep anywhere in the world and be perfectly comfortable, right? So it's the mood of the story that changes. And when you change that, then there's no record to keep. There's no wrong that has happened. It's all good. And so that's what love would do. My gosh, that was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I, I learned that, you know, we we can either let our attitude control our circumstances or let our circumstances control our attitude, which many people choose to do, or we can let our attitude dictate our circumstances. And that all comes down to our choice and how we react to our life events that come in. But you had me at on the fifth day, we had chicken dinner. <laughs> oh, my God, that was so good. That was so funny. <laughs> I, I'm taking it that you didn't have any chicken problems from that day forward, at least not from that. <laughs> no, no, all was well. Everything was. Oh fine. man, I'm crying. I'm literally. I got tears. That was so. That was hilarious. But it has a great point, and I appreciate. That was. Whew, is that story in the book too? I haven't seen me in the book. Yes. <laughs> that's a golden story. That is awesome. Wow. So that's two. We got twelve to go. How much time we got? <laughs> Oh my oh, God. So yeah. I definitely want to get a copy of that. Is it by chance on Audible as well? Has it been uh, spoken? It's coming out on Audible. I haven't been given a date, but I know that it's coming out on Audible. So says okay. the publisher. So great. I love that's. I didn't read until I was 47. I didn't realize the reason was because I was just, my eyes would be so fatigued after a couple pages i just i couldn't read anymore i didn't know this i mean it just was like i don't like reading it was what i thought and then uh then audible came out my mentor told me about it i started listening I'm like oh my gosh this is this is awesome <laughs> <laughs> no kidding just walking around listening to books or in the car when i was commuting and all kinds of things and it was awesome uh so yeah audible so you have someone else reading it uh someone else is doing the reading yeah, you know, it's funny. I really wanted to be the one. I asked the publisher if I could please be be the one to read. And um, uh, they had already made a contract with the company. And so I, 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 it won't be my voice. It'll be somebody else's voice. So they're not going to be nearly as funny as I am. <laughs> that's okay. I'll guarantee that. That was like, <laughs> wow. Everything was awesome. Yeah, I listened to a book by Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he started in the beginning and he went for like 20 minutes and then the rest was somebody else like, wait, bring back the author. Come on. <laughs> I, I do think it's a different read. That's right. I think it, it is. It's a different read for sure. Yeah. I want the yeah. full experience. I want to hear it from the author, you know, and I'm glad that you tried. At least you were, you had that in mind. 
uh, because you get their emotion, the raw emotion that they went through. As you're reading it, you remember it, just the chicken and all that. And just watching you going, oh, my God, am I going to lose a leg here? What's going on? I mean, no one else can do that better than you. Uh, so maybe maybe a second version down the road. Who's Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Get a you know get a new office built in your new home that you're moving to and make it soundproof just just for one book you'll do it. <laughs> that's right, that's right. I'm game. I'm game. So you have achieved something that so many people have dreamed of, and so many more have never even thought of, and that is to be completely free to do completely what you want when you want because you you basically have walked away from having a business, and you're now free and liberated to do. You can write your own ticket is the way I explained it earlier. So, you know, it's 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 sad that so many people don't even get to the point of really thinking about what that would look like. You know, what would that be? Because we're so buried in the forest of trees of of that task list that's bigger than we can ever finish in one day. So I'm just curious if there's any way you can encapsulate what it feels like to have achieved what you have, where you're at today. What are the emotions that go through you every time you get up? Uh, just let other people know what it what it truly is like so they can live vicariously through you until they themselves achieve that same status. Well, I can tell you that in the last few months, I've been to Mexico twice. I've been on a cruise. I head out to Spain next week. Um, I've been to Miami Beach a couple of times. That's kind of nice. That's kind of nice, I got to say. Uh, but it's, um, it's a freeing feeling. Like it's a great feeling to not worry about payroll and not not be paying humongous utility bills month after month and, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes and, you know, all the things that come with a business and knowing that the business is going to be there. One of my businesses was food, catering. I had wow. two facilities and, and could feed 1,200 people on a Saturday night. And then we had COVID. Oh. So that was fun. But we pivoted. We changed things. We did other things. And I kept people employed. And we made it through. And then I sold it. So it all worked out. And But I think going through COVID, though, too, uh, changed my mind about what I really wanted to do. Because I thought, I'd, I don't know. You know, I'd sell if somebody came along, which is exactly what happened. I got approached. Uh, to sell rather than even having it listed. Yeah, which is kind of nice. And uh, it just worked out. The timing was perfect. Everything was perfect. And to not be in the food industry um, now is okay with me. I'm all right with <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine for so many reasons. Oh my gosh. But the thing that uh, folks out there that are listening, the, the real key to all this is for you to get where you got, what did that take? I mean, the journey from building the business, starting it, going through COVID, all of it. What did it take for you to personally get to that point so others can realize in a real world what it takes to get there? I, w I was just hoping I could hear it from your words instead of Mike. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, hard work. You know, I love what you say, work hard and work smart. And it's so true. You know, we, we, before the show, we were talking about how, how some people want to start a business. You know, they think if they're in business for themselves, it means they get more time off. It's like, oh, no, if you're in business for yourself, you're going to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You, you never walk away from the business. In fact, it's kind of funny. My uh, my mom died years ago and my my dad remarried and me and my brothers, my dad, were all these type A, high, strong, ridiculous people. Right. They have 25 balls in the air at any given time. And uh, he married a woman who all her kids, very nice when we were all grown at the time and um, very nice, but they all worked for somebody. So they all punched a clock and when their day was done, their day was done. Well, the first Christmas they were married, we tried to do it all together. You know, we're this combined family, the Brady Bunch now, you know, we're gonna do this all together. And I had a good time. I thought everybody had a good time. I thought it was nice. Well, a couple of days after Christmas, my dad called and he said, yeah, we won't be doing that again. And I, I'm like, what? What do you mean we won't be doing that again? What happened? Like, what was wrong? And they thought we were a little too intense. And I'm like, intense? We were laughing, joking, you know? He said, they don't talk about business because, 
you know, there we talk about business all the time. You know, we talk about it all the time, which I guess we do. I guess we did. And apparently we're too intense. So uh, we didn't do Christmas together anymore. <laughs> it's funny. I can relate to that having a corporate background myself. I can so relate to that. It's interesting. And I see both sides very clearly. Uh, I, I love your side so much more uh, because that is, that's a sign that you love what you do. It's not, you know, it's a business. It's 24 seven. Like you said, I mean, the moment, I mean, I can't go to sleep at night because I'm thinking about it. And then when I get up, first thing I'm thinking about if I got enough sleep, I don't know, but it doesn't matter. I'm just at it. Uh, but that's because you love what you do, not because you have to do it uh, necessarily. I mean, there are responsibilities, like you say, with payroll, you got to take care of things, but in the end, you're doing it because you love it. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> if you're not, then it's a grind, and you won't be talking about it when you're off together with another family. Uh, because, <laughs> you know, as a person in corporate back in those days, that's when I'm like, I, you know, there would be people trying to plan weekend get-togethers. Like, no way. I'm like, why not? I said, last thing I want to do is be reminded about work. And no offense, but just your existence will remind me of work, whether what, no matter what we talk about. And they always inadvertently, they, I mean, eventually always start talking shop. So those few times I would buckle, I'm like, oh, that was a mistake. Here I am on my day off and I'm thinking about going back on Monday already like this stinks. So I get it. I get it from both sides. And yeah, I, I would rather hang with you <laughs> for sure. It's, it's just, it's so, I don't know. It's so fun. It's fun to talk about business, you know. And I often look at my wife wondering if I'm boring the bejeebers out of her because <laughs> she's not as much into the entrepreneur space, but um, that's all right. We love each other. And I'm going to take your your words of advice for me personally to listen to her more intently, be in the moment. I, I was just, this is awesome. She's my why. Uh, she was diagnosed with breast cancer last March. So we're going through that. She's going through it more than anybody, but it's devastating to me because she's my girl. And uh, she's going to be fine. And she's just going through some final cleanup treatment. I don't know what you call it, maintenance. Uh, so, yeah, so it's unfortunate that we go through these things. But um, it's fun to learn from people like you to make the most out of every moment. And it's good to have these reminders. So I appreciate you, number one, writing the book, dedicating probably over 14 months of your life to do it. Uh, and for the story about Haiti, that was just, that was the best. That was awesome. <laughs> Oh, I've got a lot of stories, trust me. Oh, you know, I know. I, I'm glad to hear your wife is doing okay. And um, I pray that she just continues doing better and better. But when I was going through it, uh, one of the things that happened was people would say, well, why you? Why you? And never for a minute did I think, why me? I, mm -hmm. I would say, why not me? Because cancer does not discriminate. Cancer doesn't say, well you're good and you're bad. So you get cancer and you don't, you know, it doesn't happen like that. So, you know, statistically, whatever it is, you know, it can happen to anybody. But the main thing that I learned is that we all have choices. And there are some things though, that you don't choose. Like I would never choose to have cancer. I have no control over that. I wouldn't choose for my husband to have cancer. I wouldn't choose to lose my husband when I lost my husband, I wouldn't choose those things, but I do get to choose how I get up in the morning. I get, get to choose to be happy. I get to choose to live life. I get to choose to live it to the fullest and get the most out of each day. And when you go through something, like I'm sure you can relate, Brian, it changes your perspective a bit, right? Uh, oh. Some of the things that you thought were important aren't so important anymore. And when you get down to what's really important in life, it's people and relationships is really what it's all about. And it all comes back to love. Mm, I love how you said it over and over and over. I get to choose. Here we go. You ready? <laughs> I love it. Yes. <laughs> that was a bomb dropping moment. Smart bombs, bombs of wisdom, bombs of knowledge. I mean, all of it. And you just, you hit the nail on the head about, it's about, human relationships. And I, the thing I like is that that carries over specifically and especially into business as well, because business is really relationships. 
And a lot of people miss that. I did for a long time. I was so into automation. I'm an automation freak. I love it. I'm a software engineer. I used to be one uh, by trade. And I love to make things work automatically and over and over and over and very well. And so uh, I used to think, I'll just automate everything and I'll blast out emails to thousands of people and just sit back and rake in the money and then realize, how come it's not working? It doesn't work that way. <laughs> and uh, it took me a long time to get through this thick skull. Thankfully, my mentor not only showed me, but he put me in a place where I could experience the importance of it by making a lot of phone calls. And I hated that at first. And then ultimately, I was nicknamed in the team, the closer. And I'm thinking, what are you talking about? I'm just talking to people. And they just say, yes. I mean, I'm not selling. I'm like, oh, this is how it works. OK, this is awesome. <laughs> and it's it's more natural. It's it's more in line with my value system. I'm not one of those hard sell person. So relationships that you just said the key, another great key. I mean, I get to choose. You said that like, I don't know, 10 times in one in just a, a series of 10 seconds or so. And I was just like, yes, yes, yes. Thank you for drilling that home. We all have that choice. How do you react to whatever circumstance life throws your way? And yeah, why not me? Exactly. Same thing. Um, you're you're a gem. You're amazing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so many people can learn so much from you. Oh, let's see. We got a comment coming in. Thanks. Hey, Andy LaRusso. Good job, both of you. It takes commitment, passion, and perseverance. Yeah. Uh, Amen to that, Andy. So true. And then he says, my sweetheart died in my arms in 2017. It, it taught me to live each day. So sorry, Andy. And uh, thank you for taking a, a valuable lesson from that. And yeah, it's there's no words that can console, but at least uh, those that take the right action. And, you know, it's never going to go away. But at least you have the right, in my humble opinion, attitude moving forward. And there'll be the down days. I'm, You know, there's the bad days. But you get to choose somebody once told me very intelligent person uh just recently too and i love that um wow all right and well, know, in talking sorry and talking about relationships i just wanted to say a minute that um when you love like first of all i've done your homework for you because i figured love out like nobody has done this in the history of the world and i have finally done this like the things i found out like you it will blow your mind. But so I've done the homework for you. But when you really do love people, when you do value relationships like that and you do love, then you're authentic. Then it isn't sales. Like you said, Then it's not sales anymore. It's relationship and relationship brings results. And sales is sales. You know, people are tired of sales. I, I don't like to walk into some places because you know you're going to be attacked by whoever is the next person in line to take the next person that comes through the door and doesn't you don't even know them and they don't really do anything to get to know you and you know whatever it is. And so, uh, yeah, be authentic. Love, love is completely authentic. If you truly love people, you're going to be. See, it's like, uh, it's almost like, <laughs> I'm saying this a little facetiously, we were designed to be this way by some creator, maybe, hint, hint, yeah. hint, maybe, maybe the reference in your sub tag of your book is, has something to do with it. I don't know because <laughs> of the book it comes from just saying, uh, but I truly believe we were designed for several purposes, but one, I, I think you're hitting the nail on the head is I think we were all put on this earth to love each other uh, and to help each other and to boost each other up. You know, when you're first born, when a baby's first born, everyone's all, oh, you're so wonderful. We're lifting them, raising them, praising them. And then it gets to the point where they can communicate and it just starts turning the other way around. Why is that? You know, why are we turning our, our just unabashed love into now there's conditional love? And now it's going to be, I'm going to, you know, be, be nice to you when I feel like it now. But when you were a baby and couldn't talk and fend for yourself, you were the greatest, most precious thing on earth. Why did that change? Right. Have, right. have you found any of that in your in the research of your book? Is anything alluding to that? Yes, absolutely. You know, one thing that that I think is so true that we forget or that we don't recognize is that we have no control over anyone. When that baby's a baby, you have some control, right? Like if they're going to get out of bed, it's because you're getting them out of bed. Like you, you have some control whether they're going to sit in a wet diaper or, you know, whatever it is, you've got some control, but they become a toddler. They're out of control. You, you don't control their every action anymore. And with adults, 
even more so, right? We have no control. And so recognizing that, that we don't have control and all we have to do is love people, it's so freeing because then you're not judgmental because you're not trying to fix people. You're not looking at what other people are doing and, and being critical of it and worrying more about that than, than thinking about loving them. You're not, there's no, no room for discrimination, no room for racism, no room for any sort of uh, leaving people out. Everybody's in because it's, it's loving everybody, no matter their religion, no matter what country they were born in, no matter their sexual orientation, no matter the color of their skin or the color of their hair or anything else, what they do for a living, how much money is in their bank account. You know, love doesn't care about any of that. There's, there's no judgment at all in love. And uh, so recognizing the non-control is, is actually pretty freeing, that you can just let people be who they were created to be, let people be who they are as they let you be who you are. You live your true you and let other people live their, their true them. I, oh my gosh, you have, you have done something so truly amazing, Kim, in all this research and writing the book. And, you know, to this day, I don't know of a, a more powerful topic and content that could have been written than what you've done. I haven't even read your book, but I can't wait now. I, I got to reread that, that chicken story for sure. But the, the rest of it is so powerful uh, because it finally gets to the true meaning, which can help us to define what is our purpose, which everyone is searching for. You know, that's like the number one question. Uh, believers and non-believers are like, why am I here? What is the purpose for my existence on this planet? And I think uh, without even reading your book that they could get a lot of answers just from reading your book because it will lead them down to the path of the way, in my humble opinion, we were created to be. <laughs> uh, and, you know, if you're, if you're going by the, the way you were designed, um, won't you work more efficiently and properly and the way, I mean, it's just, it just makes sense. But uh, my gosh, would you mind holding your book up one more time? I got to get this back up on screen because this is too important for folks to miss. It's called Love Is by Kim Sorrell. And her last name is S-O-R-R-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, just to be sure for those of you listening on podcast. And the subtitle is A Year-Long Experiment of Living Out, 1 Corinthians 13, Love. I love it. I know. I know. It's it's pretty <laughs> shady to have those little puns, but That's this okay. is it's all about love. Yeah. And it's so applicable in every facet of our lives, including business. Some might say, well, what's this have to do with business? Well, I think if they've watched this from the beginning, they kind of get it. It has everything to do with business. It's just about life. And business is a part of life for many of us. Some no longer. I think. <laughs> this is awesome. But, you know. What do you what are your plans going forward, Kim? Now you've got me uh, curious about that. Like um, you've written the book. Now you're traveling. You're having fun. You're free. You're getting into a new house. What is the next step for Kim Sorrell that's going to continue to fulfill your purpose in your mind? Well, I'm very passionate about the things that I learned. I'm very passionate about about spreading the word. The world would be a different place. The world would change. It, it changed my life, and I know that it would change other people's lives too. And so I'm speaking. Um, I'm writing more. I'm going to write Love is for Kids, I think, will be my next book. And uh, love is universal, and we might as well understand it. You know, we, we might as well really grab onto love and love the right way and, and uh, keep peace and joy in the world. Have you, uh, and I'm not, I don't want to put you on the spot. I'm just curious. It makes me think of things like, is this something that could or should be turned into a follow on teaching event, like a five day summit or educational program that they could either download or just, I don't know, they'd probably be best to be experiential to bring some chickens in and have people sleep outside during the summit and <laughs> go through that and then have chicken dinner the next uh, fifth day. But, um, have you, have you gone down that path of thinking about maybe making it something that people could digest further and, and take them deeper into the understanding? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I do want to do that. I've been thinking about that. I did do um, in February, I did a 14 day love challenge since there are 14 words and phrases and oh. uh, it's on my website for free. Anyone can take the love challenge. And if you do, 
I'll send you for free a wristband, a WWLD wristband. What would love do wristband? Because if you can answer things that way, what would love do? You're going to make the right decisions. You're going to do the right thing. I love it. And thank you for the reminder because I did not show your website yet. So it's kimsorrell.com. That's K-I-M-S-O-R-R-E-L-L-E.com. Uh, and on there, there's where you can get her book. That's where I'm heading right after this show is over. Uh, <laughs> and you look at, there's so many different uh, wonderful things in here. There's a video interview she's done with somebody you might have heard of, Jack Canfield. Amazing, amazing guy uh, that just... I mean, he raved about your book and I can see why I can see why rightfully. So uh, I see there's T-shirts, there's all sorts of wonderful things. Uh, it just goes on and on. And there's, oh, yes, some Haiti. I'm, and for those of you listening on podcasts, we're showing her her website uh, on the video. And so just go take a look at Kim If you want to reach out and contact her, there's a contact form there. Um, what would be a good reason for someone to reach out to you, uh, Kim? Who would be someone that you could possibly help down this path? Uh, business leaders, um, any any type of leader that wants to have a different climate around them, that wants to lead in a better way, uh, strengthen their abilities to to lead the right way, so that it's not just about work and it's not just about home, but it's about life. It's about everything. Uh, someone who wants to enrich their life and um, live a free, wonderful, happy existence without conflict. And they should, they should come my way. And it's, it's so, it's not surprising at all. The first type of person you talked about was a leader because you are astute and you understand that people follow leaders. And if the leader is leading them in a proper manner, they will also, it's like, they just, they echo everything you do. It's like kids, you know, they, they're like sponges. Uh, you, I've had people in my company that literally start talking, using the same words I, I say in my everyday discourse and it kind of freaks me out. And then I think, oh my gosh, I got to watch what I'm saying, be very sure that I'm not, you know, leading people down the wrong path or anything like that. So I love how that's, you know, was the first, uh, set of people you came out with because that's the most powerful and important set are the people that are leading others. If they are leading in a more organic, loving way, then can you imagine how the culture of that entire company will change? Because it does, it, ha it, the way a company runs, it truly does trickle down from the top. Uh, it, it permeates every, uh, is that true with you, Kim, and your, your experience that what the oh, leader does, how they, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. I mean, people take their cues from you and um, what and your expectations, you know, you have high expectations for yourself and and for the work that you do and for the people that work for you and with you, you know, keep your expectations high. We're all probably capable of doing more than than we do. And so with, with high expectations means that you've got trust in them, you've got faith in them that that they can do it and trust and faith in yourself. So you expect good things, you get good things. It just rings so true. I mean, it's like, I don't know. It's like we were separated at birth. Um, <laughs> it's like- I think, I think we are twins. I'm pretty sure I we're think so. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean, we got the same hair color. I mean, come on. I know, right. It's gotta be. Where have you been? <laughs> I know, I missed you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, all of it. And then I'm I've, when I was a young man, like in my 20s, I loved sports as many young guys did. And I love I ended up really gravitating, gravitating toward kids and helping them in sports. I just love playing with me because I was so immature. I don't know. But I found that the best way to get the most and this wasn't the purpose. It wasn't just to get the most out of them. It was to get them the best results for them was to use positive reinforcement versus negative. Uh, I've seen, and I, you know, I'm 20 something and I'm at one end of a basketball court and I, there's an adult coaching his little kids and another, you know, an older adult, I'm an adult, but you know, 40 year old adult man. And all I hear is him yelling. 
And I look over there and I just see the kids and they have this, you know, the hunched over coward look like, oh, we did something bad. And he's only yelling at one of them, but the whole team is affected. And mine, it was like, if you do everything you possibly can to the best of your ability, I will lift you up and praise you. Even if you miss that basket, that is not the issue here. You will make it sooner or later if you continue to just follow the lead and do what you're, you know, coached to do. And if you just do everything you can with all you've got, not everyone's gifted the same way. It's okay. And if you, but if you do, there is discipline involved. If you uh, go against, or if you're playing grab, you know what they would say, uh, aside, not paying attention, it's run laps. So you keep it in order. But at the same time, I love to lift and raise people up, especially when they deserve it. Uh, even if the result didn't, uh, wasn't achieved ultimately, to me, it's not about the, the result. It's more about the intent. The result will then come in play. What, do you, what are your thoughts on that kind of philosophy? Uh, uh, absolutely. absolutely. I agree with you, my twin brother. Yes. I coached, like I said earlier, I coached basketball for 25 years. I coached uh, varsity volleyball for 17 years and, and we won games. Um, uh, the 17 years of coaching high school varsity volleyball, 16 of them, we were ranked in the top 10 in the state of Michigan. And, uh, we, we won because you should. Because if you're going to do it, you, you should do it with excellence. You should do it the best way you can. But that is exactly how I coached. I uh, praise, 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 and look for the good, and you'll get it next time. And certainly with correction, I coached my daughter. That was a little tough. You know, sometimes she'd get a little mouthy, and I'd just say, just start running, honey. Just start running. I'll tell you when to stop. And I'd coach, coach everybody else for a while and just watch my daughter do laps. But, um, but yes. You get a lot more out of out of people when you praise them. And look at studies that have been done in business where people would rather have a compliment from you, would rather have words from you than money. Yes. I mean, that's how much it means. Yes. That's how big a deal it is. And that's 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 universal. Yeah. They would rather have the praise. The recognition was the word that I would see. Uh, whether it's a certificate in front of your peers, whatever that case may be, but some kind of acknowledgement that we think you're doing a good job, uh, whatever it happens to be. So I just saw the clock and we just went over, Kim, and I'm I'm like crazy. Uh, thank you. You've been awesome. And we're not done yet. I hope you can stand for a few more minutes because I end the show with a, a very profound question. And I've got to, are you okay with a few more minutes? I know you're uh, in a different no time problem. zone there. So uh, I appreciate that, number one. Uh, number two, real quick, I did promise everyone who stayed on live that I would uh, show them how they could win that five-night stay at a five-star luxury resort. Uh, and I'll do that in just a second. Uh, Kim, I'm going to ask this one final question to close the show. And it's a very profound question. I, I started asking it uh, kind of by accident. I'd ask it several times over the course of several shows, not every show, and started paying attention to the answers. And go, my gosh, this is uh, this is a powerful one. I like this. We're going to keep doing this. Uh, so we'll come back to that in just a moment. So by promise, I did promise. So I try to keep my promises. Uh, here is how everyone, you can win that five-night stay at a five-star luxury resort. Compliments again of the Big Insider Secrets. Get out that pen and notepad, whatever you use to write, and write this down. You don't have to do this this second. Wait till the show's over. And here we go. I'll put it up on the screen. For those of you watching live, all you need to do is go to this URL, write this down. It's ryp.im forward slash vacation, ryp.im forward slash vacation. And I want to double check something here real quick. We got more comments. I think I think everyone for that, we are running out of time, ladies and gentlemen, even though you know we make our own time. I A little birdie told me that Kim Sorrell herself may have a gift to uh, provide. Is that still true, Kim? I can that bring is, that up. Yeah, that is absolutely right. true. I, I do have a prize. All right. And there it is. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so go ahead and uh, explain that and how people can um, reach out to get that. That is amazing. Yeah. So um, uh, message me on my uh, website and I will enter you to win. Uh, message me within the next couple days and one person will win a copy of my book that I will sign along with a WWLD, what would love to wristband and a one hour Zoom Q&A on understanding real love. 
Uh, okay, I got to let people know that is a lot. That is a massive value, especially the one hour Q&A uh, because of how valuable I'm sure Kim's time is and has been uh, because of what she's achieved and what she can do to help you. That is phenomenal. So go to kimsorrell.com, as we've stated earlier, and I'm, I'm guessing go down to this contact area. Is that how they would do it, Kim? Yes, exactly. All right. So then for those of you listening on podcast, remember a couple of days. So to re put this in perspective recording, we are on Cinco de Mayo. It's May 5th, 2022. So you have a couple of days to take her up on this amazing uh, offer and enter to see if you get to be one of the lucky ones. And just go to kimsterell.com. Scroll down to near the bottom. It's kind of a green turquoise -ish looking area. It says contact. Even has her email address right there if you want to reach out to her straight away from uh, using her email. But Definitely take her up on that. And I like to always say this, uh, folks, wonderful folks like Kim who offer these amazing, uh, especially one-on-one -on -one prizes, and that is to do so with respect, please. Know that this is her time that she set aside for you and come with topics about love in mind and have your questions. What, what would be a, a perfect um, uh, conversation real quick? Uh, what would be a topic that you love to have people reach out for you? you for um if people are having problems with, in their relationship and and wondering what to do or parenting and you know frustrated because that can happen and and how do you love your kids when they're driving you crazy and uh staff you know how do you take care of your staff how do you love your staff when when they're not all getting along how do you make it happen for them Ooh. so she's she covers all the bases so Everybody should be uh, uh, writing that website down, kimsorrell.com. Don't forget, do it. All right. So thank you so very much, number one, Kim. That's very valuable, uh, incredibly valuable. And I'll read off what we have here. It's a, It says it's a love package, and it's her book. And it's her book, Love Is, and a W, What Would Love Do? Wristband. I love that. WWLD. And a one-hour Zoom call answering Q&A. She just so eloquently uh, stated, and she puts here, it's a $450 value treated as though it's over a grand over a thousand. Uh, because truly if, if you're going through those issues, any of the issues she specified, and I'm sure she can handle many more, what is that going to be worth to you? Now she's not charging you 450. She's not charging you a thousand, but if you treat it in your mind as though you're spending that kind of money, you're going to get a lot more out of it than if you didn't. That's just my humble advice there. All right. So we're going to get to that question. At last, at long last, Woo, we made it. So uh, it's a profound question. It, it um, the, the beautiful part about it, Kim, is there is no such thing as a wrong answer. It doesn't exist. It's just the exact opposite. It's the only correct answer is yours because it the answer will be unique to you. It may take you a microsecond, which is a very short period of time, to come up with the answer. It may take you multiple seconds or even over a minute. Either way, it's perfect. Why? Again, because it's your answer. So there's zero pressure on this. And now that I say that, you're going, holy moly, now what is it? Um, it, it just builds up the, the tension. I know I, I've heard it many times, but it, that the whole point of that is to relieve the tension. So <laughs> with all that being said, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Kim Sorrell, how do you define success? That is a great question. That is a pretty profound question. I, I would say um, it's not the amount of money in your bank account and it's not how big your house is or how big your car is or how new it is or how many customers you have. Anybody can work hard and achieve those things. But to really have success, it is about relationships. It's about having great friends. I, I have friends since grade school that are still some of my best friends in life. And to have those relationships is such a gift. I mean, it, it's so valuable to have people that have known you your whole life and still like you. <laughs> it's kind of nice. So having great relationships really is the sign of a successful person. Mm, I think you know how this is going to end, Kim. 
Yes. <laughs> I love it. I wow. love it. Knowledge bombs, bombs of wisdom, <laughs> smart bombs, all of them because of this amazing young lady, Kim Sorrell. You've been an absolute joy. I appreciate you. Uh, your, my gosh, that book, it's going to be flying off the shelves. I just can see it. And I hope it does because of the impact you will have on so many people's lives. I can't wait to hear about your upcoming, whatever you're going to call them, seminars, boot camps, training sessions, membership site, whatever it happens to be. Please stay in touch now that I know that I've just lost a sister when I was 57 years ago. Uh, I, I'm not saying you're that old. I have no idea, but I doubt it. Uh, but we're, we're somehow twins. There's got to be. It, it just happened. But, we are. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> What's your mother's name again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Gosh, you're, you're a treat. You're an absolute treat. Um, appreciate you for coming on, spending more than an hour with us and, and everyone who's been listening and watching. Appreciate you as well. That's it for this show, everybody. I appreciate you all. And I'm going to say I love you. Ooh, there's a good one. There's a good one. Oh, let's, end, let's end shows with that from now on. That, that's even more powerful. I get, I get to learn wonderful things from amazing guests like Kim Sorrell. And speaking of that, we're going to have another one a week from now. So be sure to tune in to the Mind Body Business Show on behalf of the amazing Kim Sorrell. I am your host, Brian Kelly. Until next week, we'll see you again then. So, so long and be blessed, everybody. Take care for now. Thank you for tuning in to the Mind Body Business Show podcast at www.themindbodybusinessshow.com. My name is Brian Kelly.